Welcome to day one. I'm Bill Turpey. Are we afraid of living more generously? And if we are, what does that fear tell us about ourselves? Stay with us. how to live more generously and I would be curious to know how you live more generously and freely for others and at the same time be responsible with your own burdens and debts and obligations in life. Well just quickly what does it mean to be more to live more generously? I, I think we have a word we use frequently in Christian tradition which is called stewardship meaning that I take care of that which is not mine. Uh, for me there's just kind of a basic understanding that gets me there which is I believe in a creator. I believe in a creator who created all that is. I believe if everything that he created exists then it belongs to God and therefore everything I have belongs to that creator and therefore stewardship is not just what I give away, it's what I do with everything that I have. So generosity is about more than simply what we give away. It's about how we handle everything we have when we come to the realization that it's not ours in the first place. It's not just about money, it's time, it's talent, it's treasure. It's how we spend our time. Are we really living in the moments that we need to live in, in community with other people? But this fellow on the street is saying, can you take it too far? I want to live generously, yes, he says, but but I want to be responsible at the same time. Yeah, how do we integrate those two? How, how do we live individualistically and as communitarians as well? I see generosity from a, a different perspective perhaps. And I, I look at the life of Christ and how he was so generous with his own life and how he sacrificed his entire life for all of us. And so in one way, by us being called to be imitators of Christ, in one way we must have that willingness to be able to sacrifice all for to be generous with generosity and I think that's what we struggle with um, individually and collectively even as a church body is finding the balance between all of those things that we consider to be related and affiliated with generosity. I can't name a single person I've ever dealt with in my ministry who I said that person's too generous. That person is just destroying <laughs> their lives notice. through generosity. So in some sense, it's a false dichotomy that we create sure. that I just, I've not experienced that. I'm thankful for the Jesus that we serve, being a Jesus that struggled e even um, there in the Garden of Gethsemane with whether or not that ultimate sacrifice of all was really the cup that needed to, that he needed to drink of. With his prayer coming before God the Father saying, you know, m maybe this cup ought to pass by me. He ultimately decided to ultimately. sacrifice, absolutely, to, to do it, but he struggled with it. And we will struggle with it too as we live on this earth. Yeah. Here's yeah. another question from Frederica Matthews Green about this question of living more generously. It's difficult to live generously when you're afraid of losing, when you're afraid of not having everything that you need. How can we cultivate a heart that is generous, that truly believes that our Father owns the cattle on a thousand hills? We, we started with this question about if you're afraid of living more generously, what does that tell you about yourself? What, what does it? Does it just tell you that you're, you're holding on to things too tightly or that you have never experienced the whole joy that can come through? Giving? Why? A friend and I once visited a man who lived in the middle of an orchard. He was maybe the most stingy person uh, I've ever met in my life. And he was surrounded by fruit trees laden with fruit. And after we left, my friend said to me, how can he be so non-generous when God is so generous uh, on the outside? And I think there's a sense of the basic generosity of God that you conform to um, in trust. I remember talking to a friend of mine who's fairly well to do and he, who gives pretty generously and I said, do you ever miss that money? He said, no. Well, part of our, the world in which we live is our very economic system is based on scarcity. When I took my economics classes in school, it was all bears, based on scarcity and that therefore we are all scrambling to get a limited size pie rather than moving from a mentality of scarcity to a theology of abundance, which is 
the apple orchard. There's an abundance around us all the time. And the truth is we don't live in a world of scarcity. We live in a world of abundance. Well, there's this passage where Jesus talks about give and it will be given to you. Good measure pressed down and running over. It's almost the idea that if you give, you can become a channel for God doing stuff through you. Indeed, Jesus also preached the parable of the talents. And what's amazing about that parable is the one who had the most talents ended up receiving talents from one who decided that they would bury their talents. Mm. And, Hold on. And, and one of the questions I have when I read that particular parable is, well, why did the one who had the most get more? My answer can only be that when we are faithful to God, God has a way of blessing us over and over again. And there's something about that piece of faithfulness of, that, uh, of, of the person who had the most that they were able to handle more. Well, I think sometimes people feel that if I don't have, an, I don't have enough to give or I'm not talented enough to give of my time. And that's what we need to move away from within our own thinking is, is that I'm not worthy enough or I don't have it all together in order to give a part of myself to others. I have never met a generous person who is not also happy. And I've never met a wow. genuinely happy person who is not also generous with who they are and what they have. One of the things that we know about people who are generous with their lives and with their gifts, um, it's not that they're from good families or have uh, better minds or anything like that. It's that somewhere in their lives, somebody was generous to them. Mm -hmm and it's become a moral narrative out of, which they, uh, out of which they live. I heard Tutu speak one time on this and say that Amer you Americans are unbelievably pragmatic. You worry before you become generous whether or not your generosity will be effective. And therefore, you need to let go of your pragmatism. And as I heard that, I thought of the story of Jesus healing the ten lepers. Yeah. Nine didn't come back. Jesus had a 90% failure rate and yet continued to be generous because that's the nature of who Jesus was. Or going back to even how the disciples didn't always seem to understand what he was here for and what he was trying to prepare them to do. And yet he didn't stop and say, okay, I'm getting 12 new ones. <laughs> this is not working. He, he worked with the ones that had been defied and, and sometimes generosity comes in surprise at surprising times and and surprising ways I read a story about Rockefeller who was sick and was about to die and had all this money and decided well I'm gonna die anyway I can't take it with me and started giving things away and lo and behold his health started improving and so it had a surprising result in his own life that he ended up living to a ripe old age that generosity healed him physically. Thank you for being generous with your ideas. Thank you for being with us on day one.